Welcome to Gilded Racing. Uh, we build Super Coopers, if you don't know about us. And today I'm going to tell you about our latest and greatest achievement, which is the Tesla powered Classic Mini. It's pretty impressive. We have been partnered with ECC out of England and they built a phenomenal system for us. Um, and they contacted us and told us about their mini conversion and they thought that our company would be a good candidate to build it. And we thought about it and I have been reluctant to do EVs. Uh, I've never really been that excited about it um, until now. Um, I really, I really do love it. it. It's the first car I jump in and go play with. Um, I mean, it's not the Type S, but it's, it's so pure in terms of what a classic Mini is and should be that uh, I really, I really think that it's, it's going to be something we're going to focus on a lot. I think that uh, the power, the 300 horsepower, is just, it's actually way too much horsepower, but. Uh, We've been taming it and uh, finding that uh, having the ability to just go recharge places and cruise around and take it to the market, just like an old Mini would have done, but being able to cruise on the freeway and you know go up to 150 miles on the range is it's really neat. It, it, it's gotten me hooked on this new, I guess this new future that we're in. You know, it's not just what I would say, petrol or uh, gas engines now it's this new world that is is coming up quickly and, and the real the real issues that I saw with the EVs was the batteries weren't there you know this Tesla motor it's insane 300 horsepower you don't need more than that in this thing in a front-wheel drive mini but uh, when it comes to uh, the battery range they really have stepped it up and the new battery systems that we're able to put in here are uh, close to 40 kilowatts which is a lot, and that'll give you a lot of driving distance. You know, freeway cruising, get you down to LA from here, um, things like that that uh, were kind of a concern for me, especially in the earlier cars I looked at. And and I really like how uh, ECC is working directly with us, and they're they're allowing us to come up with ideas and and kind of make some retrofit concepts to allow AC and other other things that all of our customers really they want and um, also got me to really think about really high-end hi-fi audio which is one of my other hobbies so having a car that's this quiet and this calm you know that's sort of it's sort of awkward at first uh, but then remind me let's listen to some music perfectly without the interference of a revving engine and I think that will compensate you know where I, I felt that the that it was too quiet you know but uh, I'm going to let Nate tell you a little bit about the car. Uh, it was his project. I just gave him the reins and said, go for it. And he made a really in incredible car. Hey, I'm Nate. Uh, I was kind of in charge of this EV project. Um, Tyler graciously let me have some artistic reign on this one. Uh, and I got to choose everything except for the color. So it came in electric periwinkle before we got a hold of it. And it just kind of stayed that way. Um, but it kind of suits the car and the vibe. Um, what else is there to say? It's a Tesla kit from Electric Classic Cars from the UK. Uh, it's got a Tesla Model S front drive unit uh, with about 300 horsepower. And this particular car has about 31 kilowatts, uh, kilowatt hours of power. The next kits will be closer to 37. Um, and it's about the fastest, smoothest, best driving classic mini you can really hope for. Um, and it fits in a package that looks absolutely stock. Uh, we can go anywhere from mild to wild, something that looks absolutely dead stock, or something that, you know, looks like a modified hopped up mini. Uh, we found that it's pretty easy to add, but it's hard to subtract. So if you start off with a complete classic, uh, it's easy to add 
big wheels and big fenders and a flashy interior and a stereo and power windows and all sorts of stuff like that, but it's hard to set it back to classic. So with this car, we wanted to keep it classic, keep it looking pretty much stock. It's got an updated interior, but nothing that's really too out of left field. Um, simple dash, simple controls, uh, easy for anybody to just get in and go um, and not feel intimidated by big screens or crazy tech anywhere. It looks, feels, drives like a classic Mini, um, except with a whole lot more power. Driving experience, uh, it's obviously it's a lot quieter, smoother, torqueier, um, but the, the things that you feel, the steering feel, the brake pedal, um, the, the feedback from the road is all still very similar to what you get in a classic Mini, which is what everybody loves about a classic Mini. Um, everybody, I, not everybody, we've had a lot of uh, questions about, oh, well, what about the, the, the feeling of the, the motor and you're putting an electric motor in a classic and that's sacrilege. The motor in a Mini was never anything special. It was, and I know people are gonna yell about that too. They had it, it was around long before the Mini ever showed up. It's been in the Austin Metro, Morris Marina, tons, literally dozens of cars had an A-Series in them. The motor's not what makes it special. Everything else about a Mini is what makes it special. It's the packaging, it's the handling, it's the styling. That's what makes a Mini special. It was never the motor. And so adding a whole bunch more power and a whole bunch more refinement to the rest of this package is really what makes this car special. As electric cars are becoming more and more popular in America, especially, charging network is expanding all the time. There's chargers everywhere. Um, this car does not have rapid charge capability, um, but thankfully uh, it does have a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger on board and it'll charge up to say 15, 16, 17 kilowatts, um, which can charge you up from completely flat. So let's theoretically you ran it all out of juice, um, should be able to get you up to a full charge in around six hours, uh, which is a long time, but you know, it's not a lot of time if you're home or at a hotel or at your overnight stop, it's not really a big deal. Um, currently we're working on a couple of upgrades for the car. Again, as I said, we can always add, um, we can add air conditioning, um, classic retrofit also in the UK makes some really cool uh, electronic AC compressor kits, both for 12 volt systems and for high voltage systems. Um, so they offer a 400 volt AC compressor that we can mount in the Mini, have AC for you, uh, basically automatic climate control, um, as well as this car is equipped with an electric heater and it is blazing, blazing hot and it's instant. You get in the car in the morning, there is no warming up, there's no choke, there's no waiting for your heater to warm up. The car is instantly ready to go. The heater is instantly extremely hot um, and it really just kind of makes the car even more usable and more drivable as a daily vehicle. There's none of that uh, hassle that you have with a lot of classic minis, which for some people is part of the fun, but for a lot of folks, they just want to get in their car and go. And this is a car that you can do that with. So this particular car is running on 10 inch wheels and tires. Obviously we can do 13s and 12s uh, to give you a little bit more traction. The 10s offer a nice ride. Um, braking is all upgraded, but standard mini brakes. This one has 7.5 rotors in the front and it's got uh, finned drums in the rear. Um, so nothing super out of the ordinary there. It's all basically off the shelf um, upgraded mini parts. So that's another huge advantage of this kit as opposed to a lot of the VTEC kits that are out there where you might have to use specialized parts or you can't use certain aftermarket parts. Um, this kit allows us to use the huge aftermarket that's already out there for the Classic Mini as far as suspension components, braking components, um, anti-roll bars, etc, etc. There's the sky's the limit as far as uh, suspension and braking upgrades go. This car isn't using uh, a assisted a booster of any sort. It does have regenerative braking, uh, which really does a great job of compensating for the added weight. The car does weigh about 200 pounds more than it did originally. 
most all of that weight is added in the rear and it actually balances out the weight distribution pretty well um, and the regenerative braking uh, available really really helps compensate for any added weight and then some it really helps bring the car down to a stop a lot more quickly uh, than just the traditional brakes do and it's all configurable as well anywhere from uh, kind of simulating what an uh, engine brake feels like and we can ramp it all the way up to uh, like a one-footed driving experience if you're used to an electric car and you like a one pedal driving experience we can adjust it so that it feels like that too and it'll almost come to a complete stop without ever touching the brakes at all it's all regenerative braking um, so saves on brake pads and it makes more electricity to get you down the road even farther with this car we wanted to keep the interior nice and simple it's got a standard center binnacle uh, instrument cluster standard speedometer and um, the fuel gauge has been repurposed as your battery status gauge so when it reads full you've got a full charge when it reads empty you're out of juice super simple there is no super complicated range guessometer in this vehicle um, it's full or it's not so when you want to charge your phone um, either there is a usb cable uh, available on the passenger side of the car or in front of the driver there is a magsafe qi charger integrated into the dash uh, you just set your phone down in front of yourself on the dash and uh, it'll automatically start charging. Charge port is in the stock fuel cap location uh, and it's disguised as a standard uh, Monza style gas cap. Um, just pop it open and plug it in. More detailed data display screen located in the trunk. Um, it tells you actual cell voltage as well as exact pack voltage and uh, allows you to adjust and calibrate the fuel gauge um, as well as I chose to keep a classic style open dashboard in this car um, partially because it is original to this vehicle it's a early mark three it's what it would have come with anyways um, and classic styling will always be classic styling um, and again it's really easy to add it's hard to subtract uh, you get big and you get flashy and it just kind of tends to muddle the look of the car in my opinion um, and keeping a nice simple dashboard uh, with just a little, little bit of, uh, I don't know, artistic update with a little bit of the, the seat material on the dash. Um, just, it's the, it's the cleanest and most classic appearance, in my opinion, uh, and classic mini. And uh, I just wanted it to be simple, and it, it just makes the car feel that much more open, that much bigger, if that, if you can say that in a mini. Um, the large padded dashboard tends to intrude towards the driver a little bit and this open dash design really helps the car feel just that much more spacious um, as well as being usable the the dash makes a nice parcel shelf so uh, why get rid of it there's limited space to put anything anyways um, your phone your keys uh, you know your small handbag just toss on the dash um, if you have a full-on dash you gotta throw it on the floor. So this at least uh, provides a, a tiny bit of usable storage space, um, as well as, in my opinion, looks the best. The gear shift in this car was also supplied by ECC. Uh, they've done a really nice job of recreating an original mini gear selector um, and even recreated the shift knob. Uh, but obviously instead of having one, two, three, four on it, it just has forward, neutral, and reverse. Um, and it's just as simple as it looks. Forward, neutral, and reverse. Uh, but it, it fits and it feels just like you would expect it to in a classic Mini. Um, it's a really nice positive engagement and uh, is a really nice fit for a classic car. This car also has a mode selector switch. Uh, normal mode and sport mode is what we call it, although sport might be a little bit of an understatement. In normal mode, it actually limits your total throttle capacity to 50% of the vehicle's overall capacity and it is still substantially faster than any A-series car that I've personally driven and I've driven quite a few of them. Um, it's still extremely torquey and extremely fast and it is literally only functioning at half capacity. Um, in sport mode it unlocks all 300 horsepower and all of your throttle pedal is available to you and <laughs> it is, it's a handful. Um, certainly 
certainly the fastest front wheel drive car, mini rather, um, I can personally imagine out there. I know there are some crazy ones out there, uh, big turbos, K series, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, I feel like they would still have a hard time keeping up with this one. Uh, this car has three separate battery packs. Uh, there's one under the hood, uh, just above the motor. There's one under the rear seat, and there is one in the trunk. Um, you lose a little bit of trunk space depth or height wise, but you gain trunk space width wise because you no longer have a gas tank back there. If you are interested in a Super Cooper EV, we are now taking orders.